Good morning, Good everybody. Morning. Hey, welcome to church. Happy Mother's Day to all yes. the mums. Happy hey. Mother's Day to you all. Happy you know, Nana's Day, Grandma's Day, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, the kids are going to be joining us this morning, which is pretty awesome. We so love that. So kids, jump to your feet and join in the songs. And dads, lean in and help the kids worship God too. Yes. Everybody, come on, let's come celebrate on, our come God. Come inside. Let's Stand worship if you're at home. Let's worship. Good morning, church. Let's praise the Lord.
is yes. still final. God, Your God, word God. endures. It's the same yesterday, yes. today, yes. and forever. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, let's give God a Thank round you, of God. applause this morning. Let's praise, praise you, Lord. Him. Let's shout at God. You are wonderful. There is no one like you. You are private. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. God, we praise you. We thank you. Thank you, Father. Let's Amen. just uh, thank God right now by lifting our hearts and inclining thank you, Jesus. our hearts toward Him. Thank you, God. I just invite you to position yourself within the grace of God. Yes. Yes. Father, we pray. Thank you, Father. To you, our God. Thank you, Lord. The one who has made us, God, who amazing. calls us, who draws Glorious. us to himself. Yes. Dear God, we pray that Thank today you, you will reach down into our hearts yes. with your grace. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now, bring your presence mm -hmm. to us, brood over us. Yes. Fill our hearts and increase our faith. Thank you, Lord. Assure us, Father, that you are here for us mm -hmm. no matter what. That's right. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Come fill us, Father. We are expectant as we meet together right now that you are in our midst and that you are speaking to each one of us. Father, we pray that you wrap your arms around each one today. Yes, Lord with the assurance of your grace and mercy, mm -hmm. your forgiveness, your compassion, yes, Lord. your strength and your courage. Yes, yes. Because yes. we know, Father, that yes. you are unrivaled. That's you right. are above all. You are far beyond anything we can imagine or think or dream. You, Father, are our God. And we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Come on, church, just praise him again. Thank him again. God, God is good. Not like you. God is There's great. Not like you. He is unrivaled. Yes. Praise you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Wow. 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 You guys are on fire this morning. Yes. Praising our God. It's so awesome. Welcome, everybody. A big welcome to all those who come, especially for Mother's Day, extended family yeah. and friends. It is pretty awesome. So glad. A special welcome to Go on. Oh, Eddie. Uh, Eddie's first Sunday in church. Oh, yes, it is. Our new little grandson, first yeah, little Eddie. Sunday in church. <laughs> Good to have you here, Eddie. Happy Mother's Day, Kate. <laughs> yeah. And a very happy Mother's Day to all the mums who are watching online. We hope that today you will feel very blessed, very special. We, we, and we, to everybody watching online, yeah. welcome. Yeah. If you would like to join in the chat, yeah. that would be wonderful. Just let us know you're there and comments and things like that. Yeah, we've got some special treats for mothers a little bit later in the service. But, but right now is a very special treat that we want everyone to share in, those at home and those here. Yes. We want you to go and stand with your mum. So kids... Get up off the floor where you're sitting just right now and go stand with your mums. Alicia, grab those kids. Come and stand with your mums because we're going to pray for mums here this morning. Now, what's, what's one thing that I we could just, say? Just, just hang on. I, I just want to do a little bit more practical detail oh. stuff. If okay. you're at home, make sure you're with your mum standing if she's there in the room with you. Okay. But, but you know, the thing is that not everybody has actually given birth to a child, but we still see some women as mums yeah. because they're like our spiritual mums or they're the ones who come alongside us yeah. when our own mums aren't there. That's right. So have a look around the room and see if you can see some women who are standing by themselves. Come I want you to go them. and stand with them so that they are included yeah. in this prayer time as well. It might be that your grandma or your nana yeah. It might be just um, uh, one of the older women in the church who doesn't have children here. Please make sure every mum has got an arm around her. So this 
morning, this morning we're really thankful for mums. What's one thing, what's one thing we can thank God for, for mums? What's one thing we can thank God for, for mums? Xander, what, what can we say thank you for your mummy? What can we say to Jesus? We could say today, we could say thank you for, thank you for, thank you for. Looking after me. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome thing. What's one more thing we could say thank you to God for our mums for? Buying me things. Oh. <laughs> Feeding me, yeah. <laughs> Looking after me, treasuring me. Let's say, come on, let's, let's all close our eyes and, and reach out to mums here this morning as we pray for them. Father, we thank you for mums, near and far, those mums who are not able to be with us. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for mums. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. Father, we thank you for the gift of mums. We're so blessed. We're so blessed for their nurture, for their care, for the who they are. God, this is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Would you bless all the mums today, Jesus? God, we say thank you for our mums, those who are not here in this auditorium with us. You bless them, Father, wherever they are travel by your Holy Spirit to them. Father, for those mums who have gone to be with you, we say thank you for them. And God, thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. Bless our mums today. Bless our mums today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we give all the mums a big round of applause today and say, Happy Mother's Day, mums. We celebrate you. We're blessed by you. We're very grateful. We have a beautiful morning tea in the cafe after the service. So, especially for mums, everything on the house. And uh, we do treasure you all. Thank you. You may be seated. And kids, I think you're heading out to Kids Church. And yes. I understand the youth are looking after looking after wow, you today, which fun. is pretty awesome. So thank you, Sarah and the team, for looking after looking after the kids today. And kids, uh, have a great day at Kids Church. If you need to take your children into crèche, we're going to just sing while you do that. And when you come back, we'll be here. us with our uh, with our new playground it's uh, yeah, it's it's very close to being completed I think on the it looks um, like the kiddies are going to enjoy it right on the away. 17th I oh know on the first sat first Sunday of June we got a, an official opening for our playground and uh, during the week there's hopscotch going in there's uh, climbing ropes going in and uh, so please, please, uh, mums and dads, just uh, don't just drop your kids there and disappear, and uh, be 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 aware of what's happening for them in the uh, in the playground. Yes, yes, don't uh, show show your responsibility, but it's uh, pretty any, awesome. Any children left in there will be given free coffee and chilies to chew. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've got to get rid of them somehow. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. It's, um, it's, we're saying a special thank you to those who have helped. Uh, yes, yesterday there's a team of people here um, uh, lay, laying, laying some turf in that area. We're not seated in that area, just lay, letting it settle for a, for a little bit. Um, not putting tables and chairs you on can, it just yet. You can walk on it though. You it's can walk on it. 
There's, um, and and uh, oh, look, there's a team of people at the end. Yeah. That's, that's the afternoon shift. I think I would like to really say a very, very special thank you to Pete Stormont. Yeah, great. And to, uh, it, it, th this week and next week and the week after, we're focusing on spiritual gifts. There's yes. a whole new series on that. And, and we want people to discover the gifts that they have that God has given to them. But, you, you, you know, the, the thing about gifts is that they're for somebody else. When God gives you something, that's for you to pass on. And I, I so love what God is doing already in the life of our church, and, and I see it's going to take us, take us to another, another level as we spend this time understanding the spiritual gifts. Like, like during the course of this week, uh, like, like last, last Sunday, Leah, Leah was counting, and, and she saw Sarah and said, I've got to pray for you, and, and prayed. And Sarah talked about how important that was, that... Uh, that Leah, do, doing, doing the function of just count, of counting the money, had a moment when the Spirit of God traveled through her and touched, touched Sarah's life and brought, brought healing. And in connect groups, it's, the similar thing is happening and people are, people are prophesying over one another and, 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 and that's so awesome in the, in the context of small groups. So thank you. Thank you for the way that you're ministering to one another and prophesying and encouraging one another. And, and the same thing was happening in the office on on Tuesday, it's like, like in your day-to-day -day happenings, allow the Spirit of God to travel through you in those moments when you encounter people and you will be surprised what the gift that God has put inside of you can be, how it can be passed on and someone can be really blessed. You know, I think one of the things with that is having courage to do that, stepping yeah. out and uh, putting down those thoughts that go, Pretty awesome. um, I'm afraid because they might not like me anymore, that yeah. kind of thing. So every day when you have your quiet time in the morning, ask for God to give you courage to prophesy into someone's life, to speak into someone's life, a word of encouragement, a word to build up. It's pretty awesome. Courage is anyway, so it's, it's not our turn to preach, is it? Oh, no. No. No, no. It's Pastor, Pastor Josh, Josh is going to be preaching a little bit later. Right. Right. And uh, we're looking forward to, to what he's going to share. You're looking forward to that? Yes. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Pretty wonderful. Pretty awesome. I want to share with you a, a uh, scripture from uh, Mark chapter chapter 10. And, and, and this is, is a scripture that's pretty dear to my heart. Yes, Jesus replied. And I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake uh, and, for the, and for the good news will... Now in return, a hundred times receive as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and property along with persecution and in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. We're, we're focusing about uh, this moment and in, on giving. A few years back, in fact, uh, several years back, about 80, 99, 99, no, a little bit later. When did we move out to Bonobi? I can't remember the date. No, that's... 98, 98, was 98, 98. And, and I'm, I, I remember thinking at the time, I'm thinking, Jesus, my mum's in Adelaide. My, my dad's property, the farm, where I would have loved to build a house on the, on the hill overlooking, overlooking the, uh, the water at, uh, in South Australia. And I remember going, God, God, I've given up to be here. And I, and I came across the scripture and goes and God goes, well why can't you why can't you have a house where there's a nice bit of greenery in the backyard like a like a forest or a state forest? We went for a drive a couple of days later out to out to Bonogan and saw and saw a block of land and go we could live here. Do, do you know as you as you give to God? He will give to you. There's an incredible promise here, an incredible promise. We, we don't just give so that we receive, but when we give, 
because of the kingdom of God, when we give because of what God's put upon our heart. Like for us, it was, was we needed to be here in Queensland. And that meant leaving home, leaving, leaving our family. And, and, and you know that one of the beautiful things is, is that in, in a church family, there's a whole bunch of people who are like mothers. And it's like, that's a pretty awesome thing. People who are like sisters and brothers. And as, and as, we, as we make choices for the kingdom of God, God puts us in a family where we're no longer lonely or in a place of grief or loss, but in a place of being blessed. That, that's what I wanted to share with you this morning, that, that, that God would bless us and look after us and care for us. And the principle is this, in Galatians 6, 7, it says, God will never be mocked, for what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. If you give of your time, God will give you time. If you're time poor, give time. You'll receive time. If you're money poor, give money. It's a great thing because we all want money or we need money to flow into our lives. Give to God and He will give to you. The harvest you reap, the harvest you reap reveals the seed you planted. And if you plant corrupt seeds of self-life into the natural realm, you can expect a harvest of corruption. Oh, don't, don't sow from a selfish mentality, that's what that means. And if you plant good seeds, of the spirit life, you will reap beautiful fruits that grow from the everlasting life in the spirit. Wow. And don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds. For in the season of reaping, the wonderful harvest you planted is coming. The wonderful harvest you planted is coming. The wonderful harvest you planted is coming. Is what? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. Yes. So, so why don't we pray for a moment? Father, Father's people are bringing their gifts to you today, giving online, giving in person, giving your time, giving you the money, bringing their tithes, bringing their gifts to the building fund. Father, Father, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for incredible harvest. And I thank you, Father, especially for people who are feeling isolated and alone today. God, I pray for incredible, incredible family of God to surround them, to love them, to include them. God, I thank you that you place the lonely in families. God, God, in your house is a place of safety and blessing, a place of welcome, a place of identity. God, I thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful. God bless you as you give today. Thank you. Thank you. I, th I, think, I think that's about it from us. Uh, there's just one more update, oh. and that's about the uh, Vision Builders Dinner that's coming up in June, June the 19th. Yes, thank you. Um, hopefully you would have received an email invitation. If you haven't, that means we either haven't got your email address or it's not correct. You've changed emails maybe, something like that. So can you please let us know um, if you haven't received an How invitation? Hello at c3urbina.org.au. Thank you. Or jump on that chat. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Good. Wonderful. So are you ready? for Pastor Josh to preach. Well, he's about to come, but just before that, we've got an incredible song that's going to help us prepare our hearts. Hey, Bella and the team, you're doing an incredible job today. Come on, everybody. Why don't we say thank you Let's to them. Let's stand. Come yeah. on. Let's get our hearts in the right place to listen to the Word of God.
in their love for God. I feel like relationships are coming back together. We're seeing marriages restored. We're seeing kids, like hearts, like come back to their parents. We're seeing parents whose hearts are softening towards their kids. In Joel, it says, like, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people, on everyone, on all people. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see, dream, see visions. Young men will see dreams that, that there will be this incredible moment in the lives of people where people seem to go back to where they were designed to be. A place of fruitfulness and hope 
a place where people come, to, come alive in their destiny. How good's that? Change the foot. God's doing something incredible in our lives. And uh, 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 it's so exciting to be here and a part of it with you. Today we're starting a brand new series called How to Work Out What You're Good At. Because we want you not just to, to know that you're called for a, an incredible destiny, to not just know that you were designed to do something that would make a difference in other people's lives, but we want, you, we want to empower you in that. And we want, to, we want you to know that every single person who, who believes in God, who has received the Holy Spirit, has been given some powerful, specially crafted, gifts so that you could have a significant, life-changing, and eternal impact on those around you. So why don't don't you close your eyes just right now, just as we start this off. Jesus, we thank you for dying for us. We thank you for giving your life with all its gifts grace after grace after grace, gift after gift after gift for our lives. We thank you for that gift. And we thank you that you've given us the Holy Spirit who a couple of thousand years ago entered the church and transformed lives, giving out wonderful spiritual gifts so that we could have a great impact on this earth. May God bless your church today with an outpouring of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. And uh, you who are spiritual mums, who are physical mums, and I just want to say as well for anyone who has, who Mother's Day, just, uh, just turning up at Mother's Day was a struggle because of grief or loss or sadness in your life, then I just want to just say welcome to church and you made it. Well done, you yeah. champions. Because Mother's Day is not always happy and is not always a happy moment. There's, there's, there, life, life is real. I was reading about, reading in Genesis, and we're going to open up in, in our, our, our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1 in just a moment to look at the design of God for mums and for people. And, and I just thought, look, you know what? Eve had it easy. Don't you, Eve had it easy. She had kids. She gave birth without pain. What is, no one's with me. Okay, this is, this is not heresy. This is, not her, I'm just, this is speculation here. I, I, I have no idea. I'm not looking to, you know, you can never judge someone, someone's life that you have no experience with. So look, let's just, maybe I'm, I'm drawing a fine line here. Maybe some of the, the reaction you're, I'm feeling here is that you're like, who are you to judge? You're a man. <laughs> You've got no idea what we women go through. I have no, I have no idea. Look, but just from the outside, just, this, is, this is a purely, let, give, give me a moment to fail as being a man here. Um, I don't usually judge women like this, big disclaimer. Um, but, but Eve, it seems like Eve had it easy. There's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no, there's no childbirth pains. I mean, Adam, perfect man, the perfect rep- representation of God on the earth. God was, was right down in the dirt. Colossians 1 says that Jesus got down in the dirt. In him and through him were all things made. He's in the dirt with the dirt going, how can we make the perfect man? He's going to be handsome. He's going to be good looking. He's going to help with the dishes. He's going to hunt wild boar and he's going to slaughter them. He's going to cook them. He's going to cook the perfect roast. Eve has it. He's, he's going to look amazing. He's going to be working out in the field so you know his body is fine. Eve had it easy, right? Eve, Eve, had, it, Eve had it good. And then after the fall, I, I just want to salute every single mum who has dealt with a fallen man as their partner, or maybe not, and who has dealt with fallen kids. You've got it a bit harder than Eve, and so I salute you. And there's no, I mean, there's, there's a lot of truth in that, Jess. There, there is, it's, 
Life is real, and it's really hard, and it's really painful. I mean, thanks, Eve, for biting the fruit. Uh, come on. Is there a sense, I don't know, is there a sense in your life as mums, is like you're reading Genesis chapter 1 and 2 going, come on. How good would it be in heaven? How good would it be in a perfect earth? And like, how good is it that we have the promise of a new heaven and a new earth fully redeemed bodies, fully restored consciences, fully restored ability to do what God would love us to do. One day you're going to get there, people. One day your kids are going to obey you. (laughs) One day the the, the world and your your family home is not going to be messy. One day there's going to be order. But I just want to just pour out, I just want us to pour out a huge... Thanks to our mums and those who treat us as mums, who care for us, who love us, who, who, who have poured their lives out like Jesus did to the church. And can we put our hands together for all of our mums, everyone who we just adore. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for my mum, who has, who has taught me all about Jesus who has shown me what it means to love and like the scripture where Jesus says, I just, I just long to just gather you under my wing. That's what you did with me. Thank you for breaking things down for me. Thank you for, for showing me the way and for teaching me the Bible. Thank you for teaching me how to pray. Thank you for loving me in that way. And thank you for your, your steadfast faithfulness in, in helping me grow. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you for... <laughs> Thank you for my wife's mum. Thank you for loving her. Thank you for helping her become who she is. Thank you for for living life through the the craziness of your life and preparing her for me. Uh, Thank you for for following the voice of God in in how you led her and how you protected her and how you worked your your butt off to to grow her in, in the way that you did. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for my beautiful wife, my, the mum of my three kids. Thank you so much for the, the incredible way that you have poured out your life for our family through the, the, the struggles that we've faced over the last um, little while. Thank you so much for the way that you've, you've buoyed me up and you've encouraged me, the way you've delved into prayer and, and following Jesus the way that you joined with me in partnership and haven't run away, uh, the, the way that you've, you've stood with our kids. And I, I, just, I am just so overwhelmed with, with gratitude. Thank you so much, babe. Love you. Yeah. I, uh, it's, it, it is so good to have good mums in your life. And, and I pray that whether you, your mum is alive or not, whether your mum is close or not, that you would have mums who would be close to you and that if, if you're feeling disjointed from your mum, my prayer today is that there would be healing in that relationship. Yeah. Uh, but my, another, also, alongside that, that you would find mums in this place, that you would find mums whose heart, with hearts would open up to you, that you would allow yourself to be vulnerable to, to people, to women in this place who would care and pastor and love you and show you Jesus. Do it. Don't be isolated. Don't complain. Or be grudging. But go and run to the arms of a mum. That's where good love is, right? How about we open up our Bibles? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Actually, let's start from verse 26. I didn't get, haven't t- told the team this. Sorry, sorry, guys. It says, let God's, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Now, now just, to, just, to, just to give a little bit of a quick recap, because I think this will be a good little backstory. Um, during all of Genesis chapter 1, which is just a great chapter to go back and to read every now and again, um, God goes through the days of, of his creation, and, and he gets to all the days where he's talking about the things that he created, the animals, the birds, the fish, 
uh, and, he, and he talks about how he creates them in their own kind, according to their own kind. So according to their own kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God loves making things according to their own kind. He's a God of order. He's not a God of just of, of gray. He's not a God of beige, and he's not a God of grayish. He's not a God that just makes everything equal. He's not a God that makes everything the same. He loves variety. It's the reason why not it, when we look outside, everything's not in black and white, but we have millions and billions of colors that our eyes can't even perceive because God loves creativity, and God loves uniqueness. He, God loves giving gifts to us, which are just even unnecessary, but full of wonder and splendor and giving God glory. How good is God? And God saw that it was good. I love it that God even looks at the things he's made and go, I did good. God's not some kind of robot dreaming up some kind of plan and just getting to it and say, it is finished. No, he got to the end of it and said, it is good. There's pleasure in you Sorry, pleasure in God because of you and because he made you. But then God said to all of these things that he created, he said, be fruitful. He blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and morning. So the design that he gave all of these animals, these birds, these fish, everything that he created was be fruitful, multiply. Expand, get ever increasing in your glory. Become more and more beautiful and more fruitful. And then he gets to the people that he created and he says, and he, like, first of all, he creates them in his own image. So that's a good thing to, to hold and come back to. And verse 28, he says, and God blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves along the ground. Be fruitful and multiply. So I want to say to you, just the scripture, the, the same thing that God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. There's a reason why you feel like your life needs to count. There's a reason why we cherish motherhood and fatherhood so greatly. And it's because God has put something in your heart that, that just desperately wants to see other people come alive desperately wants to see other people released to do what they were designed to do. Something in you desperately wants to see your life change someone else's life. It's because God gave you that beautiful gift. He designed you, He created you to have an impact on someone else's life. That's why you're here, to be fruitful, to multiply. Now, as I said before, that's, that's not always easy. That's, that's the design of God, and, and, and it all worked perfectly for Adam and Eve until they, fought, until they fell, until they walked away from God, until they said to God, God, we'd rather be masters of our own destiny, thanks. And so by separating, separating themselves from God, they separated themselves from the, the ease that went with fruitfulness, the gifts that went with fruitfulness. So Adam and Eve, desperately trying to be fruitful, now if they had kids, it was hard work. Now if Adam worked, it was hard work. Now they would walk two steps forward and one step back. Now they'd try and have kids and sometimes it wouldn't work. So now, now they would try and be fruitful and find frustration. Now crazy as this may be, God subdued, subjected, the Bible says in Romans. He, he said to the world, okay, in, in order to woo these guys back, in order to bring people back into relationship with me, what I'm going to do is create a tension. I'm going to subject them to frustration. I'm going to say their life has to be hard without me because I'm not fully in it. And in their brokenness, hopefully, they're going to turn to me. Hopefully, they're going to look at me and reach out for me and hopefully find me when they seek me with all their lives and all their heart. And so there's this frustration that we feel when we're trying to be fruitful. Who loves that frustration? Who knows that frustration? It's like, 
trying to start this flipping business. Like, I'm just four steps forward, five steps back, three steps forward, another step forward, or two steps back, and we're, we're making progress, but it's not how I think God designed it to be. Trying to grow a family, and, and, you're, and, and you're working so hard and teaching your kids discipline, but, but it just doesn't seem to be sticking. Not, not my kids, just I'm saying this just general. <laughs> Our kids are just doing it amazingly. This is, this is not my opportunity to throw my kids under the bus. <laughs> Hopefully I'll tell you some good stories too. Um, but, you know, you know the, the, the frustration we feel as people is because we have fallen. It's because we've separated ourselves from the original plan of God. And here's an interesting thought. Here's an interesting case for God and a case for a creator. The reason we feel frustration is because we know there's a better way. The reason we feel so strongly that we, we should not have to take steps back is because there's a God who designed it so that we'd only take steps forward. The reason why we feel pain is because it shouldn't have to be like that. We feel a loss for something we know we should have a right to, which speaks to the glorious worth that God has given us. We, uh, we, we feel like we're kings that have been treated as paupers. We feel like life should be better. We feel like life should be easier. But we feel the frustration of being subjected to that frustration that God's given us. But enough about that, because we have Jesus. And, and in Jesus... God himself coming to earth, he, he came to earth to say, you know what, enough is enough. I want to do an end to death and I'm going to deal with everything else. I'm going to do an end to death and eternal suffering. And I'm going to come and I'm going to give my life as a gift because I love these people. I want to bring people back to the original design of fruitfulness. Instead of saying, Go into all the world and be fruitful and multiply. Jesus gave a new command in Matthew. And he says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. See, that isn't that amazing how that beautifully mirrors what God said to Adam in the garden, saying, be fruitful and multiply. Jesus comes to earth and he says to the people, be fruitful and multiply. I'm, and, and, and in a few moments, in a few days, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and he is going to be your helper. He is going to give you gifts and empowerment to help you get back to some original design. You're going to find some things easier again because God is going to give you gifts called spiritual gifts. So you thought you were all that when you had talents. You thought you were great when you had skills. But Jesus says to you, you know what? Your skills and your talents, they may be great for current temporary growth for current temporary things that would impact other people's lives. Sure, you can get, d administer wisdom and grace and love in a physical and a, a mere talented way. I'm going to give you something that is spiritual. I'm going to give you something that supersedes. I'm going to give you something that's not temporary but eternal. I'm going to give you something that is not just for now but is for evermore. I'm going to give you something that is has a disproportionate effect with your actions. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit himself. Paul in chapter 12 of uh, sorry, yeah, chapter 12 of Romans. Um, out, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and I, those would be two great great chapters for you to go and read up on during this week. As we, as we delve into this spiritual gifts topic, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Romans chapter 12, starts to outline some of the spiritual gifts that God has given us through the Holy Spirit, be it prophecy or wisdom and teaching, mercy and hospitality, uh, all these intercession, all these beautiful gifts, evangelism, leadership and apostleship, gifts that God would give us so that we would have an effect of fruitfulness on the people around us. 
See, God doesn't want our lives to be without effect. Paul says to us, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. And the grace of God is not without effect. God wants your life to be effective. God wants your life to make a difference. And he also says to us, eat, in 1 Corinthians 12, he says, each of us have been given spiritual gifts. I just want us to dwell in that for a moment. Each of us, every one of us, has been given some spiritual gifts just as you have talents in your physical body. In, in your, you have talents in your mind, you have talents in your work, just as you can develop those talents into skills. You also have been given, as you've received the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts. Each of us. That means you. And as Pastor Don said before, that those gifts are not just for you to be receiving with, but those are spiritual gifts for you to give with. Those are spiritual gifts that, if you used by yourself, would never bear fruit. But if you were to give those gifts, if you were to plant those gifts, if you were to, to work those gifts, as Paul said, I work harder than anybody, but not just me, but it's the grace of God working through me. If you were to put those gifts into action, your life would have a disproportionate effect on the lives around you. You work a little, God loves that. He gets into it. He helps out. He pours his power through you. And your life starts to see life change. You work with a little bit of energy. And God works a little bit of his energy, which is an enormous amount of energy. And you start to see people healed. You start to see people encouraged through prophecy. You start to see people welcome in to, welcomed in who have never felt welcome before. You start to see people, come, their eyes come alive with God and with the gospel. You start to feel like people are, are getting nurtured and cared for more. You start to see that people start following you, but you've never been a leader, but God's gifted you to be a leader. You start to see an effect around your life that just has changed people's lives. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 verse 11, I, I love this scripture, he says, I just long to be with you. He's saying to the Roman people who, he had met a lot of them, he'd met a couple of them, he, he sent his regards to a lot of them at the end of his letter to Rome, but, but he hadn't met all of them, but he, but he longed to be with them. Why? He said, I long to be with you in order to impart some kind of spiritual gift to make you strong. Now just pause there. Uh, impart doesn't just mean to give you. It also means to use my gift. He says, I know I've got something of value that I need to give you. I need to bless you with what God's given me, and I long to see you. I long to be able to give this to you. My heart's desire is that you would be strengthened, and I love the purpose of this. The reason for spiritual gifts, the reason that God would want to give you spiritual gifts is that you would make strong, that you would make strong the people around you, that those around you would be strengthened in their faith. That there's something to do with their life, their walk in Christ that, that is, that is getting, getting weak, that is feeling uncertain. There's doubts in their mind. There's discouragement in their soul. And you see them and you long to be with them because you just want to give them something that's going to stir them that's going to put structure around them, that's going to heal the hurts of their heart, that's going to reduce and remove the pain in their lives, that's going to, that's going to draw out the suffering and the poison, and, and you're going to patch them up and you're going to care for them. You're going to cause them to be fruitful again. You're going to cause their lives to come alive and, 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 and be fruitful and multiply. That's the power of a spiritual gift that God wants to give you. And what God wants you to give others is that, that you would cause other people to become fruitful as well. So that's a handy thing that we, we realize in Genesis chapter 1. He says, God says to Adam and Eve, he says, be fruitful and multiply. Notice he doesn't say be fruitful and add. Do you notice that? Now, if you're a subtractor, I'd pray that God would change your subtraction into addition. That'd be a great place to start. 
If you're someone who brings down, I'd rather you be someone who adds. If, if you're someone who, who, whose voice and whose speech always brings down other people, then, then I pray that God would help soften your heart and, and, and soften your tongue and you'd be someone who would start to add to people's lives. If you're a divider, if you're someone who, who is someone who, who brings people apart, who separates, whose, whose tongue and whose actions are, are, are all, all about, and you've noticed that, and other people notice in you that you, you separate people and you, you bring people apart and you talk people down and you're, you're constantly dividing people, I pray that God's heart would change your heart. That He'd help you not to be a divider or a, or a or a subtractor, but an addition, an adder. But God calls us to be a multiplier. See, we reproduce each according to our kind, which means that as we reproduce, the people we reproduce, the people we reproduce, the spiritual fruit that we have, the people we bring to know God Himself, start to multiply themselves. The buck doesn't stop with us, with our spiritual gifts. The, the spiritual gifts don't stop with the people we give it to, but there is a continuation of God's giving that happens as we give according to God's design. We're covering a lot of ground here. I hope this is good. Let me sum it up in this. I got, I've got a friend who's having some heart problems. And uh, he, he went for a checkup and he, and he saw his specialist and his specialist says, you know, you've got your four chambers of your heart, but the fourth one, there's some damage in it. It's like I, the, the first chamber, that's beating hard. And sending the, sending the blood in, in a good volume to the next chamber. And the next chamber is pumping the, volume, pumping the blood beautifully to the next one. And the last one, and the doctor didn't do this, is just, just flopping about in the breeze. Be good to see your doctor just do this. And so, so, the, so the man, this, this, this friend of mine has four chambers of his heart which, which work as, as a unit. They work as pa in partnership. They work in sequence. The, the first gives blood to the second. The second gives blood to the third. The third, they, they, there's this push of blood and that, and that push that's created should, should s cause a great circulation of life to go right through the body, Right? There's this continual flow as we connect together, as the parts of the body, as, as Paul beautifully describes the church body as, connect together because there is a flow of life. And so my friend has, has realized that through some stress of life, the fourth chamber of his heart is feeling damaged and broken and therefore is not able to keep up with the push of blood and push of life through his body. I mean, it's... It's not detrimental for him, but he needs to watch it. And I'm praying for a full, a full healing for him. I'd love you to join with me in praying for him. I thought, how, how pertinent is that for us? That if we're called to multiply, we're called to give gifts and give gifts to the portion that we are given gifts. So if you're a chamber of the heart that has, has suffered damage or is inactive, then I want you to come to a moment right now of, of realizing that you are holding up life. That you are stopping the flow of life in our church. Now, that's a hard word. And that's not just something that I want you to think of. I want, that, I want that to be something that I think of. How have I been given gifts and not passed it along? Oh, I can't think of how many times I've, I've read a scripture and gone, oh, that's nice, that's good, that's good for my soul, and, 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 and promptly forgotten about it before I shared it with someone and passed the life on. I can't think of how many times I've, I've received a prophecy but not actioned it, and I'm desperately sorry for that. Or how many times I've received the care of my friends and not in turn given that spiritual gift on. I implore us, I implore you to be, let's be people who pass on the gifts that God has given us. How do we recognize this? And we've gone way over time. How do we recognize the gifts that God's given us? I think there's three key things that we can do. First of all, how does your heart break for those who are around you? 
It may be that you see injustice in someone's life that needs to be fixed. Maybe God's asking you to fix it. Maybe you see the hurt in someone's heart and you go, maybe God's asking you to heal that. Maybe you see a problem in spiritual administration and you go, I just want to make this ordered. First thing is affinity. Do you connect with the problem? Second is opportunity. You can see a need. If there is a part of the, if there is a chamber of this beautiful heart of God that, that is empty of blood and you have something to give it, then pump blood into it. If you've got an opportunity to love and to pour out blessing into someone's life, then you just beat with all of the blood that God has poured out into your life. With all the love you've received, you give. All the healing you've got, you give as well. Can you do that, church? Affinity. Everyone say affinity. affinity. Opportunity. Affinity. And effect. So the third is, like God, Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God, and that grace was not without effect. See, as you have your heart that says, I just want to help people, and you say, I see how I can help people, and you pray for those people, and you pray that you'd be an effective minister for those people, then you're going to see things happen. And you'll work out what your spiritual gifts are, not by doing some kind of crazy profile, which may or may not work. You'll do it by putting a foot in action and saying, I just want to love these people. How would you want to love people? Where can you see love, the way you can love for people? And, and, and did, it learn, did it work? And then you work out how you can love and grow in your spiritual gifts. I'd love us to just to stand in the, in the presence of God right now. See, this incredible gift of God, that we could be fruitful, that we could love, that we could cause those around us to be fruitful, this, this, this desire in us to make a difference has been filled by God. God wants to empower you to make a difference in other people's lives today. And I'm believing that right now as we pray and as we ask God to fill our lives with his presence, that he would give you spiritual gifts. That he would give you ways to bless others and bring fruitfulness to this world. But before we do that, I, I want to ask you, have you... Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted that Jesus had to die for your sins, to obliterate them, and along with them the gap that you had between yourself and God? Have you accepted his forgiveness for all you've done in your own work, in your own will? And have you come back to him? Because the first step of this, before you can be fruitful, you need, the fr you need the vine to be attached to. Jesus says in John chapter 15, I am the true vine. You are the branches. If you're connected to me, I will bear, you will bear much fruit. God's will and his desire, his love for you is such that you would be reconnected with him. You'd be given back to your original design of being fruitful. I want us, everyone, every one of us closing our eyes right now in the presence of God. And we're all going to pray a prayer. You're going to repeat this after me. Of giving our lives to God. And I'd love you to join in with me in this moment. Dear Jesus, Thank you for making me. I'm sorry for sin. For what I've done wrong. Taking me away from you. Thank you for Jesus. Your death on the cross. Forgiveness of my sins. And my whole new life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Empower me. Give me gifts. 
so I can live for your glory and others' fruitfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you who have prayed that prayer or a prayer like that for the first time, I, I am so pleased for you. Welcome to the family of God. You are saved. You are new. And God's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit as you believe in Him. And He will give you incredible gifts to change the world. God bless you online. We are so thankful that you're joined with us today. Read Romans 12. Read Roman, uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as well. And, we, and also get in touch with us and chat in the mo- right now in the chat. Why don't you talk about spiritual gifts with your online pastor? God bless you. Have a great week.